You are watching Cold Fusion TV. The silent battle that's been going on for eight long years. Two different underlying philosophies, two different types of users, almost two different worlds. One side values stability, ease of use and simplicity. This is Apple's iOS. The other side values openness, choice and customization. This is Google's Android. The rivalry between these OS's is also personal to a large percentage of the population who own a smartphone, the most personal device of all. This is part one of a two-part series on Android versus iOS. In these videos, we'll take an interesting look at the brief history of both Android and iOS, weigh out the pros and cons of each, and then we'll take a look at what conclusions we can draw. Is one better than the other, or is that even the right question to be asking? There's a lot to this story, but to really understand it, we have to go to the beginning. By looking at the history of each operating system in context, we can understand their philosophies completely. Let's begin. In 2005, when Steve Jobs was first envisioning the iPhone, either he could make a miniature version of the Mac, or enlarge the iPod, which was Apple's main portable product at the time, into a phone. Steve assigned two different teams within Apple to pursue both options. The team in charge of scaling down the Mac created the iPhone OS, now known as iOS. Now software on mobile phones is like, it's like baby software. It's not so powerful. And today, we're gonna to show you a software breakthrough. Software that's at least five years ahead of what's on any other phone. Now how do we do this? Well, we start with a strong foundation. iPhone runs OS X. So why did Steve ultimately choose to scale down the Mac? Well, there's two main reasons. The first one, Mac OS was already complete. It had animations, sound, power management, and many other things built in. Why would you want to reinvent the wheel when you could just optimize the software and get it to fit in a smaller package? The second reason is that Steve knew the software inside and out. This knowledge helped him know that optimizing software to shrink the Mac down into a phone was indeed possible. Such deep involvement is often rare for a modern CEO. So we have to ask, how exactly did Steve know the software so well? As it turns out, macOS was actually made from the remnants of a software called NextStep. NextStep was developed by Steve Jobs when he was fired from Apple in 1985. As a fun side point, the World Wide Web was actually built on a NextStep system in 1989 by Tim Berners-Lee. If you want to know more, you can check out a video that I did on the history of the internet in the description below. In 1997, Apple bought NextStep, which brought Steve Jobs back as the CEO. Over the years, NextStep was developed further to finally become macOS, which as we know, finally became iOS. So in actuality, iOS didn't just fall from the sky, it had a rich history all the way back from early 1986. This is one of the major reasons why iOS was so polished from the get-go. Android, on the other hand, was a bit of an experiment upon release. Founded in October 2003 by Andy Rubin, Rich Mina, Nick Sears, and Chris White, Android was initially supposed to be digital camera software. Of course, early on, it was clear that this market was way too small, so the company concentrated on producing a smartphone OS that could take on Nokia's Symbian and Microsoft's Windows Mobile. It all started when I first met Andy, who was CEO of Danger, and I was working at T-Mobile. We also had another friend in common, and the three of us all believed that it was too difficult to get new products out to consumers in a timely fashion. And we thought the missing link was not having an open platform. And that's how Android got started. In July 2005, Google acquired Android Incorporated for over $50 million. With this capital, Android began developing prototype phones Early Android prototypes were more like Blackberries, that is, they had no touchscreen and a physical QWERTY keyboard. Later prototypes were later re-engineered to support a touchscreen to compete with other announced devices such as the 2006 LG Prada and of course the iPhone in 2007. On November 5th, 2007, an industry watershed moment occurred. The Open Handset Alliance was unveiled. 
The alliance was an effort to develop open standards for mobile devices. It included HTC, Sony, Samsung, Sprint, T-Mobile, and chip manufacturers such as Qualcomm. Google knew they couldn't do it alone. The first commercially available smartphone running Android was the HTC Dream in late 2008. Although it was rather jangly and didn't seem to fit together very well, heavy Gmail integration, widgets, and a useful pull-down settings menu, along with almost limitless customization, set Android apart. The lagginess of the HTC Dream and other early Android devices when compared to the iPhone resulted in a negative perception in the minds of the average uninformed consumer. It did also do some brand damage to the operating system early on. Since then, however, Android phones have changed greatly over time. Over the years, Android became more refined, less buggy, and overall more polished. Okay, so that's all well and good, but some of you might want some practical quantifiable proof of this. How has Android performance in comparison to the iPhone changed over time? Well, in early 2014, the touch response time for a high-end Android phone was around 114 milliseconds at best. In comparison to this, the iPhone 5 and 5S came in at a blistering 75 milliseconds. But by the end of 2014, new Android phones had come to the market and things had changed in that short amount of time. As shown by the data here, the top smartphones were actually more responsive than the current iPhone at the time. Alright, so I've been talking a lot about how Android has changed over time, but what about Apple? Well, as you would have guessed, these changes weren't only limited to Android. iOS has also changed a great deal over time. A lot of the early limitations pertaining to options and features have been lifted. iPhones are now a far cry away from having no video camera or copy and paste. Now there's a choice of two phone sizes, a notification center, low power mode, and limited multitasking. Android viewers may note that a lot of these things have arguably been borrowed from Android. Okay, so with all of that history out of the way and all of that said, that brings us to the present day. Which OS is better today? Looking objectively, today stock iPhones still lag behind Android in terms of functionality. But is this necessarily a bad thing? Do the benefits of iOS outweigh the cons? Or is it flipped to the other side? Does Android hold the key to success in its openness and choice? In the next episode, we'll take a look at the app environment, user base, pros and cons, issues and features of both Android and iOS. After this, we'll finish off with what's in store for the future. Where are Android and iOS both going? It's going to be a great video, so stay tuned. Anyway, this has been Dagogo. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, leave a comment, and subscribe if you're new. I want to thank you for watching, and I'll see you again soon for another video. Cheers, guys. Have a good one. Cold Fusion. It's new thinking.